Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us for a very special program uh, that we have for you. You know, part of the vision of Word of Faith Ministries is, of course, proclaim the Word of Faith, be a showcase of ministries, and train people to fulfill the Word of God. Well, this week we're going to be doing something along the lines of showcasing the ministry of Pastor Keith Moore. Pastor Moore is a tremendous uh, pastor, and he's a tremendous teacher in the body of Christ. And this message, when I heard it on his uh, weekly television program, it just went off in me like an explosive. And you need to hear this message and receive from it. So we're going to play it this week and next week. So I encourage you to listen closely to this message Maybe even get the audio of this and play it over and over and over and feed on it, and you'll be blessed by hearing the Word of God concerning the power of the tongue and that we are to speak the same thing that the Lord wants us to say. Let's go right into that message now. Turn with me to two openings, if you would, to James 3 and Proverbs 18. James 3. And Proverbs 18, we've been on this subject for some weeks now, talking about the power of the tongue. The power of the tongue, and we should uh, continue. James 3, what is it, verse 2? James 3 and 2 said, Many things we offend all, if any man offend not in word, and what he says. The same's a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Perfect uh, in this context and from the words used doesn't mean flawless. It means complete. It means developed. And this is a, a, a sure indicator of where we are in our spiritual development and maturity. If you're constantly missing it, in what you're saying, you are not spiritual. You're carnal. You're a spiritual infant, undeveloped. If you're growing up, you'll go days and not miss it in what you say. If you're really growing up and becoming like the Lord, you'll go months at a time. You'll go a year at a time and not miss it in what you say. Somebody that's really growing up in the Lord and develop, then they, they don't miss it. They miss it less and less and less in what they say. Should we focus a lot on what we're saying and listen to what we're saying? He goes on in that chapter to talk about how that you can steer a horse with a, a, a bit and bridle. And you can steer a huge ship, even though it's out on the giant waves of the ocean and, and fierce winds blowing against the huge ship. You can control the direction of that big vessel with a relatively small rudder. I think if it had been writing today, he might have included the steering wheel. Because that's what these things do is steer the course of the horse, the ship. And he said, your tongue is like that bridle, it's like that rudder, it's like that steering wheel. Is it true what we're saying is steering our life? Yes. Is that true? Yes. That what's coming out of our mouth is steering us up, down, good, bad. Is it true that what we're saying is driving blessing away from us or it's bringing it to us? Yes. It's hurting us or it's healing us? Yes. It's hindering us or it's helping us? Yes. Is it true? If your life or some area of your life's been going in the wrong direction and you want to turn it around and get it going in another direction, just like your car. If you're headed south and you want to go north, what should you do? Not just press the accelerator harder and cry. And go, I don't want to go south, I want to go north, I want to go, oh, why am I going so far south, I want to go north. You've got to 
You, you got to, you can cry, you can beg, you can fast, but as long as you hold that will south, you're going south. And people are doing this, Christians are doing this, they're begging, they're praying, they're doing all this kind of stuff, they're counseling, but they won't change what they're saying. And so they're stuck going that same direction. In Proverbs 18 and 20, Proverbs 18 and 20 says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with what? The fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Before increase appears in your accounts, in your wallet, in your purse, you got to get increase in your mouth. You must talk increase when you're not seeing any increase. Because that's how we turn this thing around, get it headed in the right direction. Don't ever say you're going under. Don't ever say you're having the worst year you ever had. The year ain't over. And what could an amazing couple of months do for your year? Watch what's coming out of your mouth. Don't talk like, well, we're down. You know, I've heard, uh, I don't know how many preachers and pastors refer to their down part of their year. Well, our crowds always fall off this time of the year, and, and this is our slow time. You, would, you couldn't beat me up and make me say that. I'm not going to confess that we have a slow time when people don't come. I actually believe these verses. The only thing that's happening in Faith Life Church is increase. That's all that's happening. I don't care what I see, what I hear, what I don't see, what I don't hear, who comes, who don't come, how much money comes, don't come. That is not what's direct in my mouth. We are increasing because the work of the Lord should increase. The people of God should increase. That's what's happening. Well, why should you say or do anything differently in your home? in your family, in your business. Say it out loud, we're increasing. We're increasing. This, is this is a good year. The blessing of the Lord is on us. Our things, Our things are coming up. We're advancing. We're, advancing. we're prospering. We're, prospering. We're, increasing. we're increasing. In every good thing, every good thing. Prosperity, prosperity is all around us. In our life. Thank you, Lord. Talk increase. And see, it's most important for you to say that when it doesn't look like it. And it doesn't, that's what faith is all about. Anybody can say it when it looks like it and feels like it. It takes faith to say it when it doesn't look like it. When it looks like the opposite is true. But we're not moved by what we see, by what we feel. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And faith will even call those things that be not. As though they were. And that's how they become that way. Aren't you glad God didn't look at you and go, sinner, sinner, lost cause? Because there certainly was a time when we looked like that, right? And we were that. But he saw us in Jesus. He saw us throughout the ages to come, ruling and reigning with him, being the glorified ones. And he said some things over us yes, he did. that's so wonderful. Yes, he did. And we can agree with him and say the same thing yes. and experience it yes. in our lives. Uh, verse 21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Say that out loud, that first phrase. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Say it again. Death and and life are in the power of the tongue. Does it matter what we say? Yes. How much does it matter? It's a matter of death or life, what's coming out of our mouth. In uh, Hebrews, the third chapter, you don't necessarily have to turn there. They'll put it up on the screen for us. But Hebrews 3 and 14. 
I want, we, we touched on this in times past, but we need to revisit it. Uh, I'm, I told you wrong. 3.1, Hebrews 3.1 is the first one we should read. He said, Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. Now, a lot of your modern translations will say confession. Christ Jesus. Jesus is called the apostle and high priest of what? Our confession. Our confession. He's the high priest of what? Our confession. Our confession. Hebrews 4.14. 414, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us do what? Amen. Hold fast our profession. Again, confession. Confession. And finally, Hebrews 1023. 1023, let us do what? Hold fast the profession or confession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Jesus is the high priest, the apostle and high priest of our confession. Now, there are people that make fun of us and label us as extreme, in error, all kind of stuff, call us that blab it, grab it, confess it, possess it, much. But you know, it wasn't uh, Kenneth Hagin or Kenneth Copeland or Charles Capps or Jerry Savelle or Oral Roberts or any of those who said, if you will say and not doubt what you say, but believe that what you say will come to pass, you will have what you say. Do you know who said that? Jesus, Jesus the head of the church. And so when these people are making fun of this, who are they making fun of? What are they making fun of? And there hasn't been enough emphasis. Do we believe Jesus is, the, is our high priest? But the Bible tells us specifically what he's high priest of. What is he high priest of? He's high priest of what's coming out of our mouth. Our confession. Now this is how we get born again isn't it? The, the most significant miracle in our lives is we believe in our heart and what else? We confess with our mouth. That's how you get born again. If that's how we get the greatest miracle in our life, why would we think things change with other areas? This is how God has always operated. The, the, the ground we stand on came into existence because God said and we're created in His likeness and image. That's the way we're to learn to operate is believe in our heart and set with our mouth. This is the way Abraham uh, got his miracles and Moses and, and David. We've looked at some of these great examples. I mean, he uh, didn't it stir your heart to see David standing out there, your teenage boy facing that giant going, I am going to take off your head. I am going to do that. And he did exactly what he said. Yeah. Right? And we see case after case of that, and we should not let the enemy blind us to this or cause us to forget this or lay this aside. This is how we got born again. This is how we get healed. This is how we get our bills paid, how our babies get healed. Everything works this way. And it's sad that most of the church is not talking faith, they're talking the problem. Most of the church. He's talking how bad it is, how hard it is, what I don't have, what I don't know, what I can't do, what's not working, what's not happening. And friend, that is just playing right into the hands of the enemy. That is letting him dupe us and lead us down the road to destruction. We are not that dumb. Come on, are we? We're not, we're not that dumb. We're going to make our tongues do their duty. We're going to quit talking what we feel and see and talk the word. Now, the, this word is translated in the King James profession, other translations, confession. The Greek literally means this. Vine's dictionary actually says this, that that word translated profession, confession, means to say or to speak the same thing. Amen. To speak the same thing. Say that out loud. To speak 
The same thing. Jesus is the apostle and high priest of what? Of us speaking the same thing. He is the apostle and high priest of you speaking the same thing. The same thing as what? That's a, that's a good guess. As what he said. The same thing that he has said. Now, there is a, uh, an area of ignorance or lack of understanding in our circles, so-called word and faith people circles. I've heard faith teachers say this and preach hard about this. I've, I'm sure I've made mistakes myself along this same line. But people say, uh, you know, when it comes to confession, just decide what you want and say it and believe it. But that's not right. I said, that's not right. You're not supposed to just decide anything off the top of your head. You're going to say and believe. And this has led to a whole host of problems. And this is how a lot of folk have had situations where they have said things and it didn't happen. And they were adamant about it. And they said it and said it and said it and maybe said it for a long time and many times and it didn't happen. Now, of course, if you've heard from the Lord, just because something didn't happen in a few days doesn't mean you quit. And some things just take a while. But then other things, it's obvious it didn't happen. It's not a matter of just standing longer. It just didn't happen. And uh, some people get disillusioned in situations like that. And they go, well, see there, that's not for everybody. and doesn't always work. And you just never know. But I want us to get into what can actually be going on in a situation like that. Lamentations 3 and 37. You don't have to turn there. They'll put it up on the screen for us. Lamentations 3.37 says, Who is he that says, and it comes to pass, when the Lord commands it not? You know the answer to that question? <laughs> Who is it? They're going to say something and it's going to come to pass when the Lord said it's not. Uh-uh. No. If he said it's not and you say it is, there's a clash of words. Boom. Do you want to be in that situation where you're actually speaking against something he said? Go with me to Numbers 14. Numbers 14. Numbers 13 and 14 tell the story of how God delivered his people from bondage in Egypt. And he told them he had picked out Canaan land, the promised land, a land that flowed with milk and honey. And they sent spies into the land, and sure enough, man, it was such a land of bounty. They brought back two men had to carry one of the huge clusters of grapes. And, but there were also giants. The Lord hadn't told them much about the giants. Giants and walled cities. And so even though Caleb and Joshua said, the Lord's with us, we can do this. Come on, let's go, let's take it. The majority said, no, we can't. They're too big. It's too hard. We can't. They will wipe us out. No way, no how. So the majority of the people believe that. We're talking about a lot of people, hundreds of thousands of people. The Bible said they all went back to their tents and they cried all night long. And they said, wish we'd have died in the desert. And this angered the Lord. We've already studied this. And he finally told him, you said that too many times to me. We're going to die in the wilderness. And you, what's going to happen is what came out of your mouth. And so he said, so all right, don't go in, go back into the desert. You're going to want to wander out, you're going to wander out there for 40 years, one day for, one year for every day uh, of the spying out of the land that you didn't believe me, didn't accept my report, but I'm going to take your kids in there anyway. Well, when they heard that, that made them sad too. 
<laughs> and Numbers 14, you know, let's just stop right here. Does it matter what you say? Yes. Whew. Is their life being affected yes. by what they've been saying? Yes. And Numbers 14, 40, they rose up early in the morning and got them up to the top of the mountain and they said, Lo, we're here and we will go up to the place which the Lord had promised for we have sinned. Now that sounds like a good confession. We're here. And the Lord told us he wanted us to go. And we're going. We're going. Is there a problem with this? Yes, Why? He has told them something else now. That's right? That's right? That's right? Now, do you remember that the Lord called these folks stiff-necked? The Lord called, he said, you're a stubborn bunch. Why? Because if he said go, what'd they say? No. no. So he says, don't go. So what'd they say? No. We're going. <laughs> now this reveals a contrary nature. But this contrariness can be disguised with a bold faith confession. Sometimes when people are making their bold confessions, we're going to go do this, and we're going to do that, and we're going to do this, it's actually a cover for their rebellion. Because the Lord has told them something else. But they're going to use their faith and do what they want. This is rebellion, isn't it? And who has said, and it's going to come to pass, when the Lord has said something else. <laughs> Proverbs says there is no counsel. There is no wisdom against the Lord. Amen. Nothing works against him. Nothing. Nothing. You don't want to be against him. You want to be with him. And what is Jesus the apostle and high priest, high priest of? And what does that word mean? He is the apostle and high priest of us what? Same. Not saying something different. The same saying the same thing. Saying the same thing. So, verse 42, Moses told him, he said, don't go up. Go not up. The Lord's not among you. That you be not smitten before your enemies. So what they say? <laughs> We're going. Making their faith confessions. We're going. We're going and taking the land. The Lord said, you better get in the desert. No, we're going. We're here. We're ready now. <laughs> See, it's a cut. The Lord said, this has been going on for months. He'd tell them, uh, go out and gather the manna. And, and don't save it. So what'd they do? He'd save it. He'd say, don't go out to get the manna. So what'd they do? they go out to get it. Ornery. Stubborn. Contrary. If he said sit down, they'd stand up. If he said go, they'd say no. He said, all right, stay. They go, no, we're going to go now. You're right. You're right. Have you ever encountered this same spirit anywhere in your dealings? <laughs> Woo. you know what this is this is part of the nature of the devil that's him he is the original stand up in God's face and say no that's where it started with him and you need to despise it you need to absolutely despise this rebellious Contrary, Amen. contradicting spirit. Yes. Don't let it have any place in you. No. They presumed to go up the hill. Verse 44, they did what? They presumed to go up the hill. Verse 45, the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites and discomfited them. What does that discomfited mean? I mean, they kicked them all the way back down the hill. 
and didn't stop there. They kicked him all the way to Horma. When you've been kicked to Horma, that's bad, man. You've been <laughs> kicked all the way to Horma. <laughs> that's past your house. <laughs> Deuteronomy 142. Let's let's stop. Were they making a good confession? We're going up. We're taking the land. That sounds good. But it's rebellion. Because the Lord told you something different. Deuteronomy 142. Moses described, he's telling them what happened from inspired utterance. He said, the Lord said to me, say to them, go not up. Don't fight. I'm not among you. Now when the Lord says, don't go because I'm not going with you. Is it time for you to say, I will go. I I will take it. I will receive it. I will. It's time for you to sit down. Sit down and shut up. Right? It ain't time to make Bold declarations and confessions. (laughs) He said, so I spoke to you and you would not hear it, but you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord and you went presumptuously up the hill and the Amorites that dwelt in the mountain came out against you and chased you as (laughs) bees do and destroyed you in the sea air even unto Hormah. You did it presumptuously. I saw an interesting definition of this last night in my study. Presumptuous means, among other things, proud, arrogant, insolent. But listen to this definition. Unwarranted boldness. Now that really tells us something, doesn't it? Were they bold? to go up and take the land. Were they making bold statements of confession about they're going to take it? But it was unwarranted boldness because the Lord told them something different. See, this will answer so many questions. We we got folks in our circles that they learned about faith and confession and they've been making confessions and saying and doing some things, but have had some things that didn't work and it didn't turn out right. And some people in their ignorance, they get angry at God. And go, well, Lord, I said that, I said that, I said that. Why didn't it come to pass? Yeah, but what did he tell you to say? What did he, he tell you? Well, to praise say? the Lord. Wasn't that a tremendous beginning to this message? Now, we're going to pick it up next week and conclude the message. But I tell you what, like I said, you need to get this and listen to it again and again and again. Now, I encourage you to write us here at Word of Faith Ministries. Our address is Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. Of course, you can always write me at my email address, which is drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, at wofm.org. Join us again next time. Remember, until then, to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.